Hello, I'm Ibrahim al Morashi. I'm a visiting professor at IE University. I've been asked a lot of questions by students. Uh, as somebody who studies pandemics, I've been asked, how do I prevent getting the coronavirus? The, event, uh, the advice I'm going to give you is not going to only help you prevent getting that virus, but any virus that causes the cold or influenza. And the best way to think about this is think about yourself in this story and think about your daily life. Okay. Uh, you've woken up. Hopefully you've had more than eight hours of sleep and you have not gone drinking the night before. The immune system is stronger when you get a lot of sleep and that you're not dehydrated as a result of drinking alcohol. Your temptation might be to get a glass of orange juice. After all, orange juice has vitamin C and that's supposed to help. That's a medical myth. Vitamin C does nothing to help you prevent getting a virus and does nothing to shorten the duration of a cold. Vitamin C might in fact give you a false sense of security. What you should really be careful for is the minute you leave your home or apartment, consider how many public spaces you touch the minute you leave that home. What I'm thinking of is the rails on the metro the door handle to a taxi, when you get on campus, every elevator button you push, every countertop you touch. Collectively, in medical terms, we call those surfaces fomites. And a fomite is any surface in which a virus can survive on. Thinking of all these areas as fomites makes you more aware of where your hands have been. And what to do in the meantime, if you've touched a public service and don't have access to a sink, if you have a hand sanitizer, make sure it has more than 60% alcohol content. If you have an access to a sink, wash your hands. The minute you get home from public spaces, wash your hands about 20 seconds. Or the rule is the time it takes you to sing two happy birthdays for somebody you love, not somebody you're showing up at their party just because you have to, but two genuine happy birthdays. The soap should be enough to kill any viruses on your hand. You want to wash your hands, every finger, as way as far as you can up your arms. That is simply giving you habits, not only to prevent this virus, but any virus in the future. Some of you might have traveled, might have already left, and are going to come back. In terms of traveling, how do you avoid catching a virus? If you're using a plane, the most contagious part of the plane is not the airplane itself. Most people think the air is recirculated. It's the security check, those bins you touch. You don't know how many hands have touched those. Make sure you have a napkin with you or wash your hands afterwards. The bins tend to be the most contagious place on an airplane journey. Once you're in a plane, the back seat pockets. You might want to put your iPad in there. That could have been the home of napkins or tissues with somebody's runny nose. That could be of what we call a fomite. So just be careful of that. Any screen you touch, if there's an on-demand entertainment, can be a fomite. That's what you have to look out for when you're traveling. The armrests, the tray, all of those could be fomites. Uh, hopefully, when this virus subsides, what is the final measure I recommend? You have to realize the people in this student community who got it are rel relatively few, but they're also heroes. They could have chosen not to go to the hospital. They could have chosen to self-quarantine, but with the possibility of spreading it to the others. And this is the final message, is to realize those people who might have been afflicted with this virus, they are heroes. By going to the hospital and having themselves quarantined, they prevented you from getting it. The key is not to stigmatize them, but realize the sacrifice they made, as well as the local health community in Spain and Madrid and Segovia that helped contain this virus. Hopefully, this virus will pass. But in the meantime, the key is to be cautious, but not panic. Panic causes stress, and like a lack of sleep, is also something harmful to your immune system. So the final message is be cautious of what you've touched during the day, but ultimately don't panic. Thank you.